ñi sante suñu borom tay ni mu ñu nek fi ci conférence kafak moy moy lo xamanteni moy commission union africaine bi saytu ci birim aviation civile moy birim avion yi ak birim jepp jawja bo xamne économie bi ci ci lolu tay nga xamne ñom seen siège bi fi la nek dakar fi lañ ko la nek tay ñu ñew ñu ñew dakar tay di célébrer seen seen buñu buñu judo seen judo muy fuk ñaar fuk ak ñettem at bu depuis mu judo nga xamne dekk africain yeb dañu ne suñu bëggé ñu mëna gëna nakal tudo soxali suñu transport aérien pour ñu mëna mel comme yeneen continent ñu ñu mel dañu wara libérer suñu frontières yi nga xamne marché unique lay nek compagnie bu nek mëna dem fu nek sa ngay laaj ay difficulté est-ce que mëna ñew sa dëkk est-ce que mëna fa atterrir est-ce que mëna ko donc ñu def ben marché unique bo xamne avec une gestion afro continentale lolu day gëna tax ñun ñu mëna am luñu bëgg té yeneen continent yi def def ko ñun ñu war ko ñun ci wara roy mo wara nek suñu roy kay pour mëna yag lo ñun ngam donc lolu dafa am solo motax tay au moins il y a une dizaine de ministres en Afrique yu fi tew tay pour waxtan saytu naka lañ koy doxalé parce que njitu rew yi ñom joxé nañu décision bi ba paré depuis 2015 tay lu ñu ñew saytu moy naka lañ koy doxalé ba mu mëna nek réalité ba mu mëna nek parce que bax nañu bind rek mais dafa wara dafa wara nek une réalité lool motax tay ñu ñew fi di waxtan tay ak suba ba nga xamné dina ñu mëna way no jafé deug la air sénégal compagnie bu bess la ma ngi doon jox ay ay chiffre rek buñu ko commencé 2019 on était 2018 compagnie bi ñetti milliards la am chiffre d'affaires moy revenu ren fin d'année 2022 compagnie bi dina dem bes témir ak fukki milliards de chiffre d'affaires compagnie bi bu muy dor amulon sa 100000 passagers tay compagnie bi amna 800000 passagers donc cela veut dire que compagnie bu def ñetti at mu def lolu té taux de remplissage compagnie bi moyenne bi muy 63% moy avion bu nek 63% dina fess té xam nañu ni taux moyen ba bo xam am né compagnie nga wara nga wara def ba nga xamné di nga commencer rentable ay 75% donc ñun légui ñu yegg fa donc lu dess moy état bi continuer di ci jappalé parce que lu dess lu xewone fan yu neew moy affaire guerre ukraine bi carburant bi dafa yoké ko yu yu bari yoké ko ba nga xamné té air sénégal mënu lon appliquer ñëk bi ci 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 sénégalais wala ci passagers parce que day day metti ci ñom donc lolu nonu mo waral Air Sénégal état bi bu mu ñëwé rek président Macky Sall sante ma ma saytu xol safara yu yu ñu ci def ñu ñu sétu loolu ñu waxtaan ak mom bañu jox ñu ñu jox ñu ay dogal yo xamné ñi ngi koy nek di top gis ngeen ni di ngeen gis fan yu neew di ngeen gis ni ñi ngi koy top suñ ko topé ñun gëm nañu ni bala bala fan yu neew rek wala bala ay wër yu wër rek di ngeen gis compagnie bi nekat lu mu nek parce que croissance nuy tuma bi wax croissance compagnie buru yek day beuri day day am ay il faut que état yi jappalé ko so gisé euh covid bi buma amé euh dama doon wax rek air france état français ak état hollande parce que air france c'est air france klm ñaar ñi ñaari dekk ñoko 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 mom hollande ak france def nañu lu meut fukki milliards euro jappalé ko pour que rek bu mu daan fukki milliards en euros waxuma fukki milliards en franc cfa fukki milliards en euros le état yi dimbele air france pour bu meuna daan donc lolou muy woné fu mu nek ni buñ nek ni après covid bi état yi ñoo wara taxaw té état té gouvernement du sénégal taxaw tem japp compagnie parce que compagnie bi alalu askan bi la alalu dekk bi la suñu patrimoine national la suñu fierté la té lepp économie bi yépp bu ci nek c'est-à-dire modèle économie woné na ni suñ ko jappé compagnie bi dina nek une des premières compagnies en Afrique de l'Ouest merci beaucoup merci beaucoup puis comme vous le savez je pense que les premières discussions et les discours l'ont rappelé le transport aérien est un des plus grands intégrateurs de notre comme vouloir d'une intégration africaine et le transport aérien est un vecteur de développement économique et social de nos différents états 
Et euh, aujourd'hui, le Sénégal qui abrite le siège de la CAFAC euh, est heureux aujourd'hui euh, d'organiser justement ce 23e anniversaire qui marque, comme vous l'avez dit, l'intention des États de construire un marché unique. Euh, euh, je, je donne quelques chiffres. Euh, le, le transport africain, le transport aérien représente à peu près 2 à 3 du trafic aérien mondial. Euh, rien que les États-Unis dépassent largement ce, ce transport, euh, le, le, le volume des transports africains entre les États en Afrique. Alors que les États-Unis font quatre fois moins d'habitants que l'ensemble de nos pays. Donc cela veut dire qu'il y a un potentiel de croissance énorme et euh, les pays, euh, l'Union africaine, nos, nos chefs d'État en 2000, puis euh, les, les gouvernements en 2015 ont, ont, ont signé un accord pour booster ce marché unique du transport aérien. Maintenant, il s'agit d'un défi de la mise en œuvre. Et donc la mise en œuvre euh, nécessite euh, une coalition d'acteurs. Une, une, euh, une volonté des États, des ministres en charge de l'aviation civile d'aller vers ce, 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 ce marché unique africain. Rien que ce matin, le ministre en charge des transports aériens euh, de la République de Cap Vert discutait avec, av, av, avec nous pour une, une collaboration plus accrue entre Air Sénégal et la TSCV pour qu'on ait des routes aériennes communes. Donc cela veut dire qu'on peut ensemble, c'est seulement ensemble, qu'on pourrait concurrencer les mastodons, les grandes compagnies internationales et jouer euh, le rôle de vecteur de développement économique parce que le transport aérien est un véritable vecteur d'impulsion de, 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 du développement social et économique. Je, je, donne, je donne quelques chiffres. Euh, Air Sénégal, euh, c'est euh, 300 000 passagers en, en, en 2019. Aujourd'hui, c'est 800 000 passagers. Euh, c'est 3 milliards de chiffre d'affaires en 2018. 100, ça sera 110 milliards de chiffre d'affaires en 2022. Donc cela veut dire qu'une compagnie Air Sénégal ne n'a que trois ans d'activité. Elle ne peut pas être comparable avec des, des compagnies qui ont, qui ont 57 ans, 58 ans. Nous sommes dans une phase de croissance et dans tous les États, les, dans tous les pays du monde, les grandes compagnies ont été accompagnées par, par leurs États. Quand nous sommes arrivés, nous avons, nous avons mis en place un plan de redressement. Donc, de, depuis deux mois, nous avons mis, mis en place avec les experts internationaux un plan de redressement de la compagnie qui permettre de mieux maîtriser sa croissance. Nous sommes en train de la mettre en œuvre par un conseil présidentiel du 28 octobre dernier où le président de la République a pris un certain nombre de décisions qui pourront accompagner cette compagnie à, à, à assainir ses, 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 ses finances, mais surtout à, à, à aller vers une compétitivité, à redorer son, son, son image et à renforcer euh, sa, sa, son, en, en tout cas ses, ses performances opérationnelles. Donc, Air Sénégal est en pleine croissance et une croissance c'est toujours comme ça, il faut la soutenir et l'état du Sénégal et le gouvernement seront toujours là pour accompagner cette compagnie à, 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 à répondre parce que c'est parce que un patrimoine national avec déjà euh, une, un, un patrimoine important en termes d'avions on a au moins une flotte de 10 avions donc nous allons continuer d'accompagner cette flotte. En décembre, en fin décembre, deux Airbus A220 vont, neuf vont être réceptionnés pour justement accompagner cette dynamique de relance de notre compagnie aérienne. À Dakar, ce 14 novembre 2022, c'est pour célébrer l'anniversaire de, de la décision de Yamsoukro. Mais en même temps, c'est un grand jour aujourd'hui et vous savez, euh, la décision de Yamsoukro voulait faire de l'Afrique euh, un marché unique, du marché unique du transport. Et il y a eu le lancement depuis euh, 2015 du MITA, c'est-à-dire c'est le marché unique des transports aériens en Afrique. Et à ce jour, nous avons 35 pays 
qui ont, fait, qui ont pris l'engagement. Donc vous savez, depuis 2000, jusqu'à 2015 à ce jour, ça fait quand même beaucoup d'années. Alors, alors la journée d'aujourd'hui, c'était d'insister et d'inviter tous les autres pays d'Afrique qui restent pour qu'ils se joignent et qu'ils prennent l'engagement pour la mise en œuvre effective de la décision de Yamskoro. Et puis c'est CAFAC qui est l'organe d'exécution qui tire les pays. Nous, le Togo étant l'État champion, et euh, c'est pour ça que le ministre des Transports du Togo que je suis, M. Atcha, donc euh, nous avons lancé aujourd'hui euh, solennellement euh, euh, l'acte pour inviter les pays qui, jusqu'à présent, qui traînent un peu, de nous rejoindre. Parce que l'objectif, c'est de faire de l'Afrique. L'Afrique est un grand continent, c'est un grand marché. Et aujourd'hui, quand vous regardez sur euh, euh, les statistiques, on montre qu'il n'y a que 10% des de, de, de compagnies et que le, 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 les habitants n'arrivent pas à se déplacer parce qu'il y a la cherté de la vie, il y a ainsi de suite. Donc, nous, aujourd'hui, dans le lancement de la décision de Yamsoukro pour la mise en œuvre complète de, du MITA, c'est de l'intégration africaine, qu'on ait un espace unique euh, en Afrique. Ceci va faire baisser les tarifs même pour les passagers, ça va augmenter la connectivité en Afrique. Merci. Comme je disais, 35 pays ont, ont signé l'engagement. Et aujourd'hui, sur les 35, nous avons 15 pays qui sont prêts pour la mise en œuvre euh, complète. Et donc, l'avantage, c'est, je l'ai évoqué, et lorsque on aura le marché unique, à l'instar des Européens et des Latino-Américains, L'Afrique va étant un grand continent, un grand marché. Il y aura création d'emplois de plus de 40 000 créations d'emplois nouveaux. Et euh, le marché, on a parlé de ZELCAF, de la zone libre d'échange en Afrique. Et tout ça, là, les barrières vont tomber. Et que, effectivement, l'Afrique sera plus forte et devant les grands des pays européens et des latino-américains. Merci beaucoup. Je suis Atia Dedi Afo, ministre des Transports aériens et ferroviaires du Togo. Merci beaucoup. Gentlemen, members of the press, thank you all for coming. AFCAC is deeply honored by the presence of so many ministers at this event, which shows the commitment of the highest level of decision making and policy making in Africa to fast track and accelerate the implementation of SATA. Allow me to start with a question. As many of you traveled great distances and had to cross many cities to get here within the same continent, the question I have is, what is the true size of Africa? If I can have the slides up, that would be helpful. Thank you. What is the true size of Africa? Many of us who flew here during the course of the past two days experienced it in real time. But I'd like to show you also what the true size of Africa is. It is a continent that can fit many others in its geographical landmass. So, here we are. We experience it when we travel, but the true size is 30 million square kilometers. And when you measure it, it can fit the United States of America, Mexico, China, and so many other countries into its land mass. This is an important and significant fact because it is the reason why aviation is so critical to Africa. And that is also why the priorities of both the Organization of African Union and African Union single out the elements and industries and sectors that can connect and integrate Africa better. Through the SATA, the Single African Air Transport Market, the African Continental Free Trade Area, 
and the free movement protocol for people and goods. What is the outcome or the objective of all of these <coughs> initiatives of the African Union? It is simply to accelerate Africa's economic and social development with a better integrated continent. So, to the next slide, let's talk about the journey of Saturn. As many of you have journeyed, so has Saturn. The next slide shows us how we started. Right from 1988 up until 1999, when we had the decision. And then in 2000, endorsed by heads of states, the highest level of decision making for Africa. In 2002, it became binding on 44 countries in Africa. And AFCAC became the executing agency in 2007. From 2007 to up until 2013, there was a lot of work done in the background. And in 2013, African heads of state again began the journey to accelerate Africa's air market liberalization, recognizing it as an enabler for economic development. And so the Saturn Initiative was born and it was finally endorsed in 2018 by African heads of state. The aim of SATAM is not just to implement the Yamasukro decision, which is the legal framework for, um, for market liberalization in Africa, but it is also to be a multilateral system, which means that individual states don't need to negotiate between themselves, but rather across themselves. That is also the purpose of the YD, which is to ensure that Africa can be connected not just within regions, but across regions. So, what are the benefits of this SATA that we talk about? Many of us have seen this image in different forms over the years, but for those of us who may have not, it is simple. Liberalization of the air and air markets brings significant benefits from supporting passengers like you and I as we fly to have better service, better connectivity, better access to air services and better competition, leading to lower fares, leading to increased traffic growth, which generates trade, tourism, investment, productivity, and ultimately contribution to economies, creation of jobs, and general well-being for African citizens and the rest of the world. So, we take this in stages. Stage one, where are we today? Based on data and it, um, from a study that was commissioned by the African Union, in 2019, total intra-African traffic was about 14.5 million passengers. <coughs> Within the Saturn group of 35, the number was 7.6 million, thereabouts. And within the intra satam YD compliance, meaning the ones who are already implementing YD to the full extent of fifth freedom, the traffic was less, about 4 million. These numbers are telling us a story. The wider picture of traffic in Africa, 14 million. Amongst the 35, 7 point something million. But amongst the YD compliant, 3 million. What it means is that YD is not being fully implemented across Africa. And as mentioned by the champion state honorable minister, where we are today, sorry, can we go back one slide? Where we are today, 
is 14.5%. One more slide, but one more. One more. Okay, so let, let's, let's go forward. I don't see the slide. Where, where we are today is 14.5%. Where we want to be is 30% by 2025. We may think that that is a big leap. It may be ambitious, but what does it actually mean? It simply means increasing the number of fifth freedom routes between these 15 countries that form the Saturn PIP. That's what it means. And that is why we're so excited by the commitment shown by these, our honorable ministers and leaders of aviation to fast track the implementation of Saturn. Next slide, please. According to data that we received from AFRA, our partner, thank you very much, we have a sample of airlines that operate Fifth Freedom Rights, from South African Airways to Air Senegal, of course, Ethiopian, Air Côte d'Ivoire, Kenya Airways, Rwanda, Air Peace, Group Transair, Royal Air Maroc. It's a sample. There are quite a number of airlines that operate Fifth Freedom. But we're taking a sample just as Saturn PIP is a sample, it's a pilot project. Based again on the data that we received from AFRA, which does not cover all airlines and all airline operations, and by which we ask and encourage our states and airlines and partners to share data with us so that we can do a full simulation for the entire continent, we have a list again of the freedom rights and how it is divided across the continent. And we can see it for ourselves. Again, this is just to show you the states out of the 35 states that are implementing Saturn. And the bars in red are our 15 Saturn PIP states. And we can see that they have significant activity on fifth freedom routes. The next slide shows us some of the airports that actually receive the most fifth freedom routes, with Douala standing very high on that point. And the reason is probably because of the nature of the regions of Africa. Next slide, please. Africa is not a country, as we all know. It is a continent of 55 countries. So again, we've taken one sample of an airline from Côte d'Ivoire, Air Côte d'Ivoire, showing some of its fifth freedom routes. It's just a sample. We will do a bigger study and a bigger exercise that covers the entire continent. We're just starting out. Now, the nature of the regions, this is a very important slide. Again, this is taken from the study commissioned by the African Union. The scheduled capacity, the capacity by freedoms. What do freedoms of the air mean? It means the ability to, for people to go easily between cities. So we can see that in South Africa, East Africa, and North Africa, our point-to-point -point traffic from city A to city B is very high. This is um, the blue bar going from city A to city B, very high. Now, Central and West Africa, it is less. The yellow bar is slightly more. What does this bar tell us? Central Africa, by nature, is made up of many landlocked countries and many states that don't have airlines. And so, they welcome fifth freedom air services from other countries. So this is very instructive, that air, fifth freedom air services helps to unlock access to Africa. Next slide, please. So where do we want to be? That's phase two. This is where we want to be, 14.5% to 30% by 2025. Next slide. And that same study also lets us know that if 
all of the 55 countries in Africa implemented additional fifth freedom routes between themselves, even one more, just one, adding one across the states, it will lead to significant benefits. But if all of them were to do so, it would create additional GDP from aviation and tourism up to and, and new jobs, up to almost 600,000 new jobs. For a policymaker, this would be exciting news. And for my country, if I was to increase uh, or introduce a new fifth freedom route with two other countries, it will create jobs for my citizens and my people. That's very exciting. It will also bring additional 1.1 billion in trade. African countries can trade between each other. And we've been working with the African continental free trade area to map the goods that countries trade between themselves. And it is quite exciting what the opportunities are between Africa. So in total, we expect to see almost 5 billion increased additional GDP for the continent of Africa just from increasing fifth freedom routes across Africa. And also a 51% increase in traffic, both for passenger and cargo, within two to three years. So it is an exciting prospect. How do we get there? That is the question. That has, that has been the biggest issue. Implementation. That is why this project is so important. The name is the SATA Pilot Implementation Project. We are going to pilot implementation. We are going to test the case across these 15 countries with different initiatives. The launch of the BIP is today. And we're so excited to be here. Following that, we have another event where we bring African countries together under the umbrella of ICAO during the ICANN for a dedicated workshop on SATA where we will be sharing an AFCAC YD compliant air service agreement that these states can share amongst themselves and hopefully align. Also, the application of key indicators and so many other things, and recognizing all eligible African airlines. And there are different frameworks. We now have a dispute settlement mechanism, in addition to a competition regulation and consumer protection regulation. So we have the foundations. We don't have everything yet, but we have enough to start. Promoting uh, policy domestication of the African civil aviation um, policy where states do not have their own domestic regulations and building a stakeholder coalition. AFCAC is merely the executing agency, but we have to work with all of our partners, not just with our member states, but with all partners to work to, to make this happen. And also we support the states um, who need improvement in certain areas. As I wrap up the presentation, and before we go into the exciting moment of the launch of our SATAM PIP, we also have to focus on a critical element. In as much as we may have the regulatory frameworks and all of the other elements, there are some things that still stand in the way of SATAM implementation, which we call non physical barriers, sometimes man-made barriers. We need to work together to clear some of these barriers, as you, which you can see up there. We also need to support our airlines um, to cooperate, to partner, and of course we'll be working with AFRA, IATA, ACAO, and all of our different, um, ACO and all of our different organizations, and ASA to ensure that we work together to make this uh, a reality. Finally, these are the flags of our countries. The 15. It is a moment of pride for us all in Africa, and particularly for us in Africa. We are really 
proud that these countries have come forward with their commitment to go into this accelerating project. And of course, these are many of our stakeholders. So going to the end, what, what do we have to do? We have to finalize the roadmap for this implementation. And again, we are working with our partners to do that. So our states, let me just let you know, uh, um, to call them out for those who may be wondering who are the 15. This Cabo Verde, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, Ethiopia, Ghana, Kenya, Morocco, Mozambique, Namibia, Nigeria, Rwanda, Senegal, South Africa, Togo, and Zambia. We will have a coalition of different stakeholders. We can see them. We have the strategic stakeholder from the president of Togo, the champion, and his minister. We have the ministerial coalition, and we have many of our key stakeholders, ICAO, the regional economic communities, AFCFTA, UNECA, and so on. We then have the states themselves, the directors general who will operationalize, the ministries of transport, the focal points, the national implementation committees, immigration, customs, all of the affiliates, tourism boards, we bring them all together, chambers of commerce. And then the industry, as I mentioned already, Afra, Aza, Ayata, ACI, Kanzo, OEMs, and ASEGNA, our development partners, UNECA, AFDB, Afrexim, World Bank, local uh, commercial banks. The private sector is also important. And perhaps the most important stakeholder is you, the traveling African, the traveling public, the consumer of aviation. So we will also be engaging with our consumer groups. Last roadmap, the next slide. The next slide. The cost of non-implementation. Why? Why is this important? If we don't do it, what does it mean? I shared already in one of the first slides that Africa, with a population of 1.4 billion people, has only about 100 and something million as people in Africa flying. That's less than 10 percent. Imagine if we were to increase it to 15. Imagine what it would do for economies, for people, opportunities that we can bring. So there would be additional 16 million passengers that can fly over the next two to three years. But they can't fly right now. Why? Because there's not enough connectivity. There's not enough. It's very expensive. It's, uh, it's not affordable. Um, the flight availability, the service, convenience, it's not really there. The AFCFTA says that it, it, air transport will double the number of tons transported. And guess what? Under the AFCFTA, the UNECA, United Nations Economic uh, Commission for Africa, did a study that says that for the, in up until 2050, it will require $350 billion additional funding for to buy trucks for to move goods by road 350 billion dollars for air traffic it's only 25 billion only 25 billion dollars between now and 2050 so that means in the next three years maybe all we're talking about is five billion dollars is five billion dollars difficult for africa no we have the resources, we have the finances, and we have the motivation to get what we need. It is only 256 additional aircraft that are required. We can do it. And so, as I close, and before I invite our next steps, the reason why we have made this presentation for you, our Honorable Ministers, is because you are our leaders in the industry and the policy and decision makers, to one, share with you what the issues are, and also to get your commitment and support that we will address these issues together over the next few years to, re to see real results, tangible results.